My name is James Williams Jr. This is Compact Number Two. This is not for children. If you are under 15 years old, probably shouldn't be watching this. If you're 15, you're probably sneaking it in. So let's give it up for pubic hair. You know, the hair that grows on your chest, grows on your nether regions, guys and girls. There are three types of people in this world. There are people who shave that shit off, like myself. The only hair I believe that anyone should have should be the hair on their head, unless you want to grow a beard, since I can't ever really grow one. And I, if I do, I'm going to Roman Reigns the shit out of it. You know, there are four. As far as pubic hair under my arms, it's more expensive to have a lot of pubic hair under your arms because you have to keep going through deodorant after deodorant because that shit clumps onto the deodorant. And um, depending on if you use aerosol or if you use uh, the stick, you know, for me, I convert it to the cans. I used to just use the stick, but, you know, also in the Army, we couldn't buy the cans because they were afraid we would start fires in the dormitory. But in, in my personal life, I switched over to the cans. This is about empty, but for me, deodorant goes a lot further when there's no hair under my arms. And most people who are in athletics and stuff, they shave everything anyway because the world wants to see your chiseled body and the hair kind of deflects that. So you don't want that being part of uh, of your, um, your web patrol. Now in the 80s, you know, pubic hair on men, our chest hair and everything was fucking awesome and attracted to women and all that shit. But for me, when I started growing chest hair, it really became a royal pain in the ass because up until I hit like 35, maybe 34, it didn't cover my whole chest. It grew in the shape of a bird. Like literally, the wings were up here and it came down. It just like went right down the middle of my chest and that shit was just like odd. So I got rid of it. I started shaving my underarms and my testicle hair and everything because one, the pubic hair is there to hold the sweat, all right? It is there for health reasons and it is there also to get on your nerve. Pubic hair also holds body funk. For those who have uh, another region issues, that no matter how much you wash, you still smell different. And you don't really smell clean. Uh, it's generally due to your pubic hair holding the sweat that no matter what you do, it won't come off. Now, for men and women, our nether regions are different. Yes, men and women both have sweaty genitalia. Now, the genitalia generally sweats more in the summertime, and with the pubic hair, it's magnified. Where without it, it's just your natural scent, and either it's going to be horrible or it's going to be somewhat tolerable. But if you wash or you take two or three showers a day, you have less problems with that. But, a lot of people are okay with pubic hair, and to you guys, I don't salute you, I don't want to know, I don't really care, I'm not done with pubic hair because I clean bathrooms, and pubic hair does fall off, it would be easier to just shave that shit off, and people who go to the bathroom tend to lose pubic hair and just leave it there because they don't want it to fall off, but I know, because I have to clean those toilets, and I get sick and tired of seeing pubic hair, plus that shit's invincible. You can clean that shit and it's like it magically comes back. So you're spending like 15 minutes on one toilet just trying to get that one fucking piece of pubic hair off. And I think that there should be a law that everybody should either have a land in the strip or as close to bald as possible. I prefer bald myself. I can't say for other people. And if, if, if you're a woman, I really prefer you to be bald because sometimes us guys kind of find it difficult trying to find the entryway into your sex organ which would be great if you either have a landing strip or nothing at all. I would prefer personally that whatever girl I'm with to have nothing at all. Now, if we break up and you go with someone else and you're down with pubic hair, grow that shit till you grow a goddamn jungle down there. But while you're with me, it is a requirement that that shit is gum. All of it. From, from your muff all the way around to your entryway, all that shit. You got hair on your ass, I want that shit gone. I want you to be shiny and I want you to have a beautiful ass like the way it was when God made it before you grew up and started having womanly problems and shit. 
Now, I don't know if you women feel that way about men. Maybe y'all like hairy beasts and shit. I don't like body hair, period. This hair up here is the only hair I want. This hair, I shave this shit every three days. This shit, I shave constantly. The chest hair, nether regions. Now, the hair beneath my knees, I leave because if I'm ever at the beach, I don't want people to think I'm one of those funny people. So I still have some hair, but only beneath my knees. Everything from my knees up to my chest is gone. It's gone. If I can find a way to get rid of all my body hair except for the hair on my um on my body uh, on my head, you know, I would um prefer to keep that. But, you know, outside of that, this has been an interesting thing, you know, because a lot of people, I have to answer text messages, a lot of people like people care, a lot of people don't. I would say it's a 50-50, but then there's that, that shade of gray, and you can't have 50-50, so everything's probably 30-40, you know, <laughs> give or take on a person's personal preference. My personal preference is that a woman is completely bald. No underarm hair, no... Another reason hair whatsoever. And in, in, in my turn, I agree that I should not have hair either. You know, because it's a lot of work to maintain your body when you have body hair. And again, like I said, I went through more deodorant with hair under my arms than without. A simple can of deodorant spray lasts almost a month with no hair under my arms. Where when I have hair under my arms, that shit don't hold me because it's not getting all under my arms. It's getting the hair and it's... It's there, but it's not 100% effective. And you know, also, if you're using powder in your nether regions, and everybody knows now, if you watch enough commercials, that some of these powders cause ovarian cancer, so it could cause testicular cancer. If you don't know, there hasn't been any cases, and God, I hope I'm not the first one, because I have had those days where even though I wash, I feel less than fresh, and I've had to throw some powder in there, or I've, uh, shot a deuce before I had to go to work, which happens after I take a shower, because there's no feeling worse than you go ahead and get in the shower, and your stomach was bothering you, but when you sat on the toilet, you didn't have to shit, but when the water hits you, you have to cut all the water off and jump out the toilet, I mean, out the tub, and take a shit, and then you have to go to work. You don't want to go to work smelling like shit, and I don't know if you guys have this fear, but I have this fear, like, if I take a shit after I shower, I feel that I need to go back in the shower, if I take a shit before I go to work, I often fear if people can actually smell me. Even though I've cleaned my ass, I've wiped my ass, i use used baby wipes, I've washed my ass. Can they smell me? That is like my biggest fear. Because I've been in places where my deodorant has actually failed on more than one occasion. So I'm very cautious. There's not a lot of things I fear. I fear stupid stuff. Okay? I fear stinking. I really do. Because I've had those instances. I fear... uh a dirty nose. I always carry a mirror and everybody's like, why do you carry a mirror? I had a bad experience with a hot chick. So I always carry a mirror. Just so I always get a BC before I go talk to a hot chick. And in case you want to know what a BC is, it's a booger check. Okay, we all have them. So I have to trim my nose hairs too just to try to make sure that none of these things happen. Because no one wants to meet a hot, sexy chick with a booger hanging out of their nose, especially if you're a dude. I don't know if you women have those insecurities. Y'all have probably worse insecurities and that's okay. But you know, you gotta be sure about, um, you have to be sure about what you're, um, doing. You know, so, if you, uh, like this video, if you think I'm crazy, you know, leave your comments. I'm gonna end this now because I have to think of what I'm gonna do for tomorrow because I have to work. I'm gonna think about my next video, my act four, and how many acts I'm actually gonna do. That's basically all my acts. I'm giving you parts of my life in a story format. They're not over-exaggerated. They're probably under-exaggerated because I actually live them. And you have to tone things down. Now, I would straight up get naked on here if YouTube didn't have rules. If I also thought it would get me more followers. But the problem is, I got some dudes following me and I don't want to lose them to please chicks because I'm naked. Unless... I can get 1,000 chicks to watch me walk around naked. Then I'll do that. Y'all won't get any big surprises or anything because I think I'm average. You know, I'm not going to walk around with my door all bona fide and shit. 
but you just never know. But, you know, until I get the body confidence, like get my abs back to a, a somewhat decent shape, I'm uh, not planning on doing any new videos anytime soon. But, um, you know, if Hollywood's asking and if they ask would I do a nude scene, like a sex scene or whatever, that really would depend on the actress and how comfortable she is, you know. Because I don't really have a problem with it. It's just that I don't have DC, and I would prefer to let her know that in a discussion before we do that. And it also, I mean, we don't, I don't want like 900 camera people in the room, you know, maybe like three cameramen and the director, and that's pretty much where it ends, you know. But most importantly, I need the actress to be actually comfortable with the fact that I don't have DC. All right. For you idiots who don't understand what DC is, dick control. If I see breast out in the open, nipples and all, my little fella down there grows up real fast. Okay? So whenever you hear me refer to DC, I'm not talking about the District of fucking Columbia. I'm talking about my actual nether regions that have it controlled. A pretty chick that's pretty here and here and here, I'm going to be in trouble. And most actresses are pretty. Let's face it, they don't really need a lot of makeup, but... I just think women are pretty in general, especially Asian women. So if I'm working with an Asian actress, you know, I got to make sure that they're comfortable. Because like I said, I don't have DC, and I don't want that, like, all over the place. Oh, well, I can't work with James because uh, he's hung like a horse, and he has no DC, and it was very uncomfortable. I don't want that, unless I'm going to get a porn career. Now, if I get to get a porn career, I hope that I'm up to snuff. I'm James Williams Jr. I hope you guys got a good laugh out of that last part of this video. This is Comfort Havoc number two. Be seeing you.